Good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining William Osler Health System tonight for the hospital's te telephone town hall. My name is Hema Ramlochen. I'm a patient family advisor with Osler's Patient and Family Advisory Council, and I'm so happy to be your moderator this evening. Like you, I'm a member of the com I'm a member of the community that Osler serves. I joined the hospital's Patient and Family Advisory Council in 2019 because I want to give back and help our community grow a stronger healthcare system. I've actually lived in the region of Peel for 40 years and worked here for 20 years. My family has used Osler services in many different areas, the kidney clinic, oncology, palliative care, pediatric, elective surgeries, and the emergency room. So I can relate to and understand our community's needs and can also speak from my personal experiences. With a little over 12 months since the COVID-19 pandemic began, this has no doubt been one of the most challenging years ever for this community. So it's important that we continue to come together with our hospital. I know Osler values opportunities like this to share important updates and to hear directly from you, the community, about the hospital and the healthcare issues that are most relevant to you and your family. Tonight, Osler senior leaders will share updates on the hospital's response to COVID-19, Osler's role in vaccination, and plans for future expansion projects. What we are looking forward to the most, however, is hearing from you, from your experiences as a patient family advisor with, from my experience as a patient advi family advisor with Osler. I know firsthand that the hospital is committed to listening to and learning from patients, families, and members of the community. Throughout our hour together, I will also ask a few polling questions, which you can easily respond to using your phone. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Osler Senior Executive Leaders with us this evening. Dr. Naveed Mohammed, President and CEO, Kiki Ferrari, Chief Operating Officer, Anne Ford, Executive Vice President, Strategy and Corporate Services, Mary Jane McNally, Chief Patient Experience Officer, and Patricia Mosnia, Regional Director of Pharmacy, Clinical Director of Oncology and Palliative Care, and Director of Osler's Vaccine Clinic. We are so pleased to welcome Dr. Lawrence Lowe, Medical Officer of Health for Peel Region and an important part, partner to Osler, who will be happy to answer any questions you may have related to public health and mass vaccination plans for the community. Thank you, Dr. Lowe, for joining us. Over the next hour, you will have several chances to ask questions. To be placed in queue to ask a question, please press star three on your phone at any time. We will get to as many questions as we can. For those callers who cannot respond, who, who we cannot respond to within the hour, I will provide instructions at the end on how to leave your questions with us so Osler can get back to you. For those of you who are just joining us, welcome to the William Osler Health Systems Telephone Town Hall. I would now like to invite Dr. Naveed Mohammed, Osler's President and CEO, to say a few words. Thank you, Hema. I'm pleased to have you join us tonight as a member of Ulster's Patient and Family Advisory Council. I see that we have residents listening from Brampton, Etobicoke, Bramalee, Malton, Caledon, West Woodbridge, and beyond. I want to thank you for sharing a part of your evening with us tonight. Since our last telephone town hall in December 2020, our com community continues to be challenged by COVID-19. I hope you and your families have remained safe and healthy over the past months. I wanted to begin by mentioning some provincial news today that impacts our community. As you may have heard, the Ontario government released its provincial budget for 2021 and 2022 earlier today. I'm pleased that one of the government's commitments is support for continued planning to expand Osler's Peel Memorial Center for integrated health and wellness site. This news will enable Osler and the community to move further towards creating additional hospital capacity to meet the needs of our region, which as you know, is one of the fastest growing and most diverse areas of our province. I want to congratulate and thank the community on this significant milestone and for supporting hospital expansion so we can continue to provide compassionate, high quality care to our patients. As we move ahead with the next stages of planning, Ulster will continue to engage with patients, members of the community, our health system partners, our donors, and others to ensure that hospital development plans reflect the needs of residents. 
I also want to take a moment to reflect on the past year and where we are with respect to COVID-19. I have been with Oster as a physician and a leader for 23 years, but it was last April, just a few weeks into the pandemic, that I assumed my role as president and CEO. Now, almost a year later, I can honestly say it's been a humbling and rewarding experience on so many levels to be a hospital leader at this time. As the region hardest hit by COVID-19 in the province, this is a journey we continue getting through together as a hospital and a community, supporting one another in the best ways we can. Over the past year, Osler staff and physicians have worked tirelessly around the clock to continue delivering safe quality care to our patients. Our health system partners, public health and the government have been instrumental in enabling Osler to quickly test, diagnose, treat, and more recently vaccinate people to help minimize the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Our hospital partners have stepped up to help when the needs of our community outweighed Osler's inpatient capacity and ensured that patients always had access to the care they need. For that, we are grateful. And as a community, you have continued to provide essential support to our healthcare teams through our through your uplifting messages, countless acts of kindness, and more than 8,000 donations. I am incredibly proud of the way we have come together as a community to tackle this virus. I also know many have lost loved ones to COVID-19 over the past year, and we mourn these tragic losses together with you. I want to thank everyone in the community for the personal sacrifices you have made to keep your families, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and community safe by wearing a mask, washing your hands regularly, and physically distancing. I know it hasn't been easy, but your ongoing efforts are helping to save lives and prevent people from being hospitalized. Of course, COVID-19 has been a focus over the past year, but I'm also pleased to share some exciting innovations and advances taking place at OSER. We are the first hospital anywhere in the world to offer genetic testing through comprehensive next generation sequencing, which is a rapid examination of genetic changes inside a tumor. This technology is leading edge and provides life-changing cancer diagnosis within days instead of weeks. And this saves vital time so that patients can get the treatments they need as fast as possible. As an emergency medicine physician, I'm proud that also has some of the best emergency department wait times for initial physician assessment times in the province. To make the experience more convenient for patients, Osler has launched online wait time clocks so you can view the expected wait time it will take to see a doctor or a nurse practitioner at a Topical General or Brampton Civic Hospital Emergency Department. As Osler continues to provide care to patients, administer more COVID-19 vaccine doses, and adjust our programs and services to meet the community's needs, please know we're here to take care of you and your family. I know we can all look forward to a better days ahead. Thank you for again for participating tonight, and I will now hand it back to Hema. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. For those who have just joined, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, press star three on your phone. This will bring you into the question queue to speak with one of Osler's leaders. We kindly ask that you keep your question brief so that we can get to as many as possible. I would now like to ask Kiki Ferreira, Osler's Chief Operating Officer, to share some important author updates. Thank you, Hima. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad we have this chance to engage with you tonight. As I'm sure that the COVID-19 vaccine is top of mind for many of you, I'll begin with an update on Osler's role in COVID-19 vaccinations. I know that a bit later, Dr. Lowe will speak to broader mass vaccination plans in the community. Osler, along with other hospitals in the province, is administering the vaccine in accordance with the Ontario government's COVID-19 vaccine distribution plan. We are working with Peel Public Health and Toronto Public Health to receive supply and administer doses to priority population groups as, designate, as designated rather, under the provincial plan and regional rollups. 
We have been vaccine, vaccinating eligible individuals since late December of last year. To date, we have administered over 40,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine at our clinics located at Brampton Civic, Etobicoke General, and the Chinkuzi Wellness Center in Brampton. Earlier this month, we began vaccinating residents in Peel Region and North Etobicoke who are over 80 years of age or turning 80 in 2021. As of this week, we began vaccinating residents aged 75 to 79. To date, we have vaccinated more than 13,000 residents in this age group. It's a great start. Osler continues to operate our two COVID-19 testing centers at Etobicoke General and Peel Memorial Center for Integrated Health and Wellness, as well as our COVID-19 cold and flu clinic at Peel Memorial. We are also proactively testing a significant number of patients admitted to our hospital. I'm proud to share that Osler has performed the most COVID-19 test of any hospital in Ontario with close to 380,000 tests completed to date. Currently, there are 76 COVID-19 patients in our hospitals. About half of those patients have a variant of concern. 18 patients are receiving care in Osler's intensive care unit. With respect to hospital capacity for Osler, our COVID-19 patient numbers did decrease following the stay-at-home order, order. However, with the variants of concern in our community, COVID-19 patient numbers have increased in our hospitals over the past couple of weeks, and we anticipate this will continue. One of the opportunities that we have made the most of during these challenging times is working with other hospitals in the GTA to ensure there is sufficient capacity for all patients. This means that Osler and other hospitals have transferred some patients across hospitals to ensure that patients get the care they need. This collaboration has made a difference in the care we provide collectively as a hospital and a healthcare system. In terms of our services, we added virtual urgent care to our emergency and urgent care services last month building on the virtual care options already available through many of our programs. Through the new virtual urgent care program, anyone 14 years of age or older who has a non-life-threatening medical issue can now book a same-day video call with one of Osler's emergency doctors. The appointment can be booked online through Osler's website and is a safe, convenient option to in-person urgent care. We recently resumed some of the non-urgent surgeries and procedures we had to unfortunately postpone last fall, largely due to hospital admissions related to COVID-19. We know COVID-19 hospitalizations can fluctuate, so we have built in enough flexibility that we can scale back our approach if necessary. Osler is grateful to the province for the one-time funding we, we received last fall that made it possible for us to add 87 additional inpatient beds. We hope this funding will continue into the future. Finally, please know that Osler's teams are working around the clock to make sure we continue to provide safe, quality care to those who need it. Please do not hesitate to come to the hospital if you are concerned about your health. We will take care of you. Thank you for your update, Kiki. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be asking you a few polling questions this evening to, inv to invite your input on some topics of interest. First, we'd like to know, how do you usually access information about William Osler Health System and hospital services for you and your family? To answer the question, please press the number on your phone, phone that corresponds with your answer. Press 1 if your answer is Osler's website. Press 2 if your answer is Osler's social media channels. Press 3 if your answer is Osler's email list. Press 4 if your answer is by calling the hospital. Let me repeat the question and your response choices. How do you usually access information about William Osler Health System and hospital services for you and your family? To answer the question, please press the number on your phone that corresponds with your answer. Press 1 if your answer is Osler's website. 
Press 2 if your answer is author's social media channels. Press 3 if your answer is author's email list. Press 4 if your answer is by calling the hospital. Before we begin to take your questions, I'd like to introduce Dr. Lawrence Lowe, Medical Officer of Health for Peel Region, to say a few words before we begin to take your questions. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, I know that there's a lot of questions likely around our vaccine rollout, and I want to share uh, that uh, we have uh, seen a, an exciting milestone uh, passed here in the region of Peel, uh, together with our hospital partners here at Willem Osler and at Trillium Health Partners in uh, Mississauga. Uh, we have surpassed 100,000 doses of vaccine administered in our community. It's a great milestone, uh, and we are also entering now uh, the next exciting phase of our vaccination rollout. Uh, as uh, you know, vaccine availability has been very limited, uh, which has really uh, uh, limited uh, the availability of appointments and the opportunity to provide protection widely. Uh, but increasing supply in the coming weeks uh, means that we are now entering a phase uh, where our mass vaccination clinics throughout the region, in addition to those located at our hospital sites, will soon be able to offer uh, many more appointments per week to eligible residents. I think this is certainly an exciting uh, an exciting opportunity, uh, especially as we move to phase two of the province's uh, vaccination uh, um, of the province's vaccination framework. Uh, there is a recognition that we have, by virtue of being one of the more populous, uh, and uh, by virtue of our uh, social, socioeconomic, and employment profiles, uh, have seen uh, some of the worst of the COVID-19 disease and have experienced uh, really uh, the most significant measures that have very much saved lives, uh, protected our hospital and healthcare system, and really protected many of us in the community from uh, chronic effects of COVID uh, in the event of contracting the disease. Uh, so uh, really just wanted to share that uh, the vaccination effort does continue to ramp up. Uh, the mass vaccination sites are operating um, and they are making the most uh, with their limited supply. Uh, and that in the meantime, while we, uh, while I encourage everyone to take the first shot that you get, um, whatever shot is offered to you upon your eligibility is a, is a good shot if it's been approved by Health Canada. I also encourage you as you wait uh, to ensure that you are um, continuing to abide by uh, the precautions, uh, distancing, masking, uh, really trying to stay home as much as possible, uh, preferring the outdoors to indoors uh, to really try to uh, prevent a resurgence. For further information on the vaccine program, your one-stop shop is peelregion.ca forward slash COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, if you need assistance in booking and cannot access the online booking tools for our hospitals or uh, from the province, you can call 905-791-5202 from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week if you are in an eligible group, which at this point in time includes adults over the age of 75, Indigenous adults, and also frontline healthcare workers uh, who have been uh, invited to attend. Thanks very much, and I'll pass it back to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lowe. For those who have just joined the telephone town hall, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, press star three on your phone. This will bring you into the question queue to speak with one of Osler's leaders. We kindly ask that you keep your question brief so that we can get to as many as possible. We would now like to announce the results of our first polling question. Our first question was, how do you usually access information about William Osler system and hospital services for your family? 39% said Osler's website. 6% said Osler's social media channels. 6% said uh, you receive information primarily from Osler's email list. And 49% said they call the hospital to get the information they need. Thank you so much for your helpful input. We would now like to begin taking your questions. Our first question is from Ellen. Ellen, please ask your question to Osler Senior Executive. Hi. Uh, first, I want to thank you for all that you've done with the uh, smooth rollout of the vaccine, the publicity that you've given it so that uh, people knew to go online and book and also by phone. But the question I have is actually from my daughter who lives in Halton. So my understanding is that today Halton announced that they are taking appointments now for people that are over 70 and uh, as is North York. Why is 
Brampton and Peel not taking appointments for over 70 when our, we are at a way higher risk of contracting COVID and its variants because of the numbers in our community? Thanks, Ellen. That's a great question. I'll ask Dr. Lowe to answer that question. It's a great question, Ellen. And if anything, you are right that we have people here who are at greater risk of contracting COVID in the community. And that's why, unlike other regions that are rushing ahead to open up other groups, we are really aware, of course, that our 75 plus population are the ones uh, that have relatively higher risks of more mortal and more severe outcomes. They are also the people who have the most difficulty in accessing booking and getting to clinics. And so to the extent that we've only done 10% of our 75 to 79 age group at this point in time, we really do want to give a bit of a fairness uh, to that group uh, to access this vital protection uh, and certainly being, you know, in recognizing as well uh, that while other places may rush ahead, you could open it up to 50, 60, and then these people would all take these slots and ultimately the people that are at the greatest risk of death and disability uh, from these diseases uh, would be left behind. So, it is a fine balance between making sure that we move quickly through the age groups to provide protection to everyone broadly, but also in a context of limited supply, that we are still giving a fair opportunity for our 75 pluses, for those who are at the most severe risk of, of, of mortal outcomes, to actually access this protection. So, uh, you know, that's why in Peel we have been trying to find this gradual balance. I think in York, the philosophy has been we're not getting bookings, we're just opening up. Thanks very much. Wonderful. Thank you for your question, Ellen. Uh, Lexi, I believe you have a question for us as well tonight. Hi, good evening. My question is for Dr. Lowe. As educators in Peel Board, both public and Catholic, we're greatly concerned with the rising COVID cases in schools, particularly in elementary schools with this third wave. We know and value the importance of students being in schools and learning together. However, we understand that you as our medical officer was to have a discussion and dialogue earlier this week with our boards to determine whether there would be a switch back to online learning schools until the school numbers are dropped. As caring educators, Peel citizens, and responsible residents concerned about the well-being of our students and school communities, we need an understanding and answers around this now. What is Peel Region's plan in regards to the education boards in our region? Thanks for the question, Leslie. I'm happy to provide a clear answer at this time. At this time, we've reviewed the data, and I understand that uh, the, uh, there is still very little evidence of onwards transmission in schools, and I know that that is really a testament and thanks uh, to the numerous sacrifices of yourself as an educator and the rest of the education community in ensuring that our school communities continue to be uh, safe places for our students to learn. Of the school closures that have occurred in our region, I understand that 20 out of 550 schools are closed, of which 17 are due to operational reasons. Uh, those operational reasons really relate to the dismissals that are taken uh, to protect school settings in the event that an exposure has occurred. Three of them are closed because there was limited transmission identified in those school settings. And so you can certainly uh, appreciate uh, that at this time with the data that I have at, at this time and our understanding of the measures and the precautions that have been taken in place, it is very difficult to recommend a switch uh, to the mode of learning, just given the numbers that I have provided you. Of course, we continue to have meetings with our educators, uh, with, our, uh, with, the, uh, school, with our school board directors and partners. And of course, should the situation change and become um, you know, uh, increasingly uh, volatile, then we would certainly revisit this recommendation. However, at this point in time, it does appear that the precautions and the sacrifices of all of you on the front line and as educators uh, are working, they are keeping uh, students safe, and they are, uh, they are allowing students in our community to access that very valuable in-person learning that is so critical, not only for their education, but for their mental health and well-being, their socialization and their development. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a question from Anna. She'd like to know if someone was in the hospital in late December 2019 with pneumonia, how could they? How could you find out if it was really COVID? I'm going to ask Kiki to answer that question. Thank you for your question, Anna. I don't know if it was yourself that was in the hospital. I hope you're doing better today and you've recovered fully. Uh, that is a discussion you should have with your primary care physician. 
Um, all diagnoses and treatment related are very individual and it would depend on your own circumstances. And um, uh, I would suggest that you do that very specifically. Great, thank you. So these are excellent questions and we thank everyone uh, for their active participation tonight with Osler. I would now like to ask two senior author leaders to share some updates. First, Mary Jane McNally, Osler's Chief Patient Experience Officer, will speak to patient and family engagement as well as Osler's current visitor policy. And then Ann Ford, Executive Vice President, Strategy and Corporate Services, will share the latest on Osler's hospital development plan. Thank you so much, Emma. And hello, everyone. My name is Mary Jane McNally, and I am Osler's Chief Patient Experience Officer. I want to take a moment to recognize tonight's moderator. You've all met Hema Ramlishan and the other members of our Patient and Family Advisory Council, many of whom are listening to tonight's event. The role of Osler's Patient and Family Advisors is a voluntary one, and we are very grateful for their valued expertise, insights, wisdom, and the time that community members offer so generously. This helps us to ensure that voices of patients and families are part of Osler's shared decision making and are embedded throughout our policy development, planning, and a number of initiatives mainly focused on patient safety and really improving our communication practices. As patients, family members, and the community, your experience is at the heart of everything we do. Our Patient Experience Office works with patients and families to lead change towards improved experiences, and we are here to support patients and families with a range of feedback, including concerns, as well as compliments. Our phone and email information is on Osler's website, or you can call Osler's main telephone line and ask to be connected at any time. I also wanted to mention Osler's visitor policy. Restricting visitation has been an exceptionally difficult decision that a hospital must make to address the risks during the pandemic. We know that support from family and friends is a very, very important part of a patient's healing process and an absolutely essential presence during an end-of-life experience. We are continuously evaluating our visitor policy, holding both safety and compassion. I encourage you to check Osler's website for more details. Thank you, and I look forward to connecting with you and answering your questions tonight. I will now pass it over to my colleague, Ann Ford. Thank you, Mary Jane, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ann Ford. And I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to provide an update and answer your questions on your community hospitals expansion plan. First though, I do wanna recognize and thank the community groups and elected officials Osler has engaged with over the past number of months on our hospital capacity pressures and expansion plan. We appreciate these conversations and the willingness of so many to help elevate hospital redevelopment in your community. As you may know, our region remains one of the fastest growing areas in Ontario and this mean the, means the community's need for increased hospital infrastructure is also growing. Since our last telephone town hall, Osler has renovated a number of areas at Brampton Civic and Etobicoke General Hospitals to optimize our spaces and to provide care during COVID-19. This, this was especially important in light of the pandemic where our patients must be safely isolated in order to prevent the virus from spreading. At Etobicoke General, our new lower level atrium recently became home to our Etobicoke vaccine clinic, showing how we can leverage these new spaces to help our community in more ways than we had imagined originally. I know there's a lot of interest in expansion of the Peel Memorial Center for Integrated Health and Wellness, which does represent the next phase in a long-term vision for hospital services to meet the Brampton area's growing and changing needs. I do want to step back and mention that hospital capacity challenges in Brampton are related to the higher number of medically complex patients who require the greatest level of care and typically longer stays in the hospital. 
the area's rapid population growth is adding to these challenges. To address these pressures, the next phase of our Peel Memorial uh, site will encompass new beds for patients who are in need of greater rehabilitation and various supports before patients can safely return to their homes. It will also include outpatient programs and services, as well as some beds for patients who need brief hospital stays. We are also proposing expansion of the urgent care center to 24-7 operations, as well as pursuing emergency department designation at Peel Memorial. Working as a hospital system, moving forward with the Peel Memorial expansion will also create additional capacity for beds excuse me, at our Brampton Civic Hospital site, up to 100 beds once the full project is complete. Over the past months, we have had a number of constructive conversations with the Ontario government about Peel Memorial expansion, and to echo Naveed's uh, comments earlier, we are pleased with today's Ontario budget commitment. I also want to address Osler's work to bring comprehensive cancer ser services closer to home for the community. As some of you may know, our patients can currently access cancer diagnosis, surgery, chemotherapy, and see a radiation oncologist at Osler. But those who actually need radiation therapy must travel downtown or to Mississauga or elsewhere for treatment. To close this gap in our community's health services, Osler has submitted a plan for a radiation program to be located at Brampton Civic Hospital. This would involve a new building with appropriate infrastructure for radiation machines. Osler's submission is currently being re reviewed by the Ministry of Health, and in the time ahead, we will engage with you in more detail to hear your feedback about comprehensive cancer programs to serve our community. A strong and vibrant hospital is a vital community asset that positively influences the area's quality of life. It supports the best possible health across neighborhoods. It creates jobs and economic opportunities, strengthens transportation networks, and helps anchor a robust service infrastructure. We are looking forward to moving forward with these projects. In the time ahead, it's important to continue conversations with you, our community, to reflect your needs in the next stages of hospital planning and design, and to create a modern and innovative health system that is here to serve you and your loved ones. Thank you, everyone. I will now turn it back to our moderator, Hema, and look forward to answering any questions you may have. Wonderful. Thank you, Anne. Uh, now for my second question. Um, we, would, we would now like to ask our, our second polling question. To answer a question, please press the number on your phone that corresponds with your, with your answer. Our second question is, are you planning to get the COVID-19 vaccine once it's available to you? Press one if your answer is yes, I'm planning to get the vaccine. Press two if your answer is, I need more information before deciding to get the vaccine. Press three if your answer is no, I don't plan to get the vaccine. Press four, I've already been vaccinated. So let me repeat the question and your response choices. Are you planning to get the COVID-19 vaccine once it's available to you? Press one if your answer is yes, I'm planning to get the vaccine. Press two if your answer is, I need more information before deciding to get the vaccine. Press three um, if your answer is, no, I don't plan to get the vaccine. Press four if your answer is, I've already been vaccinated. We would like to open the line to answer more of your questions. Please press star three on your phone to bring you into the question queue and speak with Osler's leaders. Again, we kindly ask you to keep your question brief so that we can get to as many as possible. On to our next question. Salfie, I think you have a question for us around vaccination. Yes. Please ask your question. Yeah, like, uh, we, can we get it now? And which, which step is going to be? Salfie, can you repeat the question, please? Like, uh, if you can get it now, which vaccination is going to be? Which type? So, Salfie, thank you for your question. The age group that you fall in, you are now able to get the AstraZeneca vaccine at select pharmacies and family doctor's offices. As we move into the next few days, the ministry will, and public health will make this available to, at many more pharmacies and family doctor's offices. And as Dr. Lawrence Lowe stated earlier, 
get the vaccine that's available for your age group as soon as you can to ensure that you can be protected. All vaccines have been approved by, not, by our government and by Health Canada, and uh, they are safe. So if you would like to get the vaccine now for your age group, it will be the AstraZeneca vaccine. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. So our next caller is Arun. Arun, I believe uh, you have a question about some of the things you're seeing on TV. I'm going to ask Patricia to take the call. Yes, Hello. Hi, Arun. Sorry, could you please ask your question? Yeah. Uh, I don't really have a question, but I have a very pleasant experience. Uh, Wonderful. The I uh, always uh, we get information from the TV how messy, how disorganized this COVID vaccination centers are. So two days ago I had my appointment and I went a little early. So the, at the entrance this young man starts me, he says, you are a little early, but since you are a senior, no one is behind you, you are nobody is ahead of you, I let you go. <laughs> So I went in, and uh, all those protocols were done. They gave me wash my hands and all with the sanitizers, and they gave me new masks and all questions about my eye photo ID, everything. They were satisfied, and then let me go to the room number two. This center is 995 uh, uh, Wellness Center, 995 Peter Robertson. The, all the young people were extremely polite, very helpful, and uh, they know their job. They were doing so good everything, and uh, they were very energetic, very professional. What, what it took, only 22 minutes. Out of 22 minutes, 15 minutes, I had to wait to see any reaction. But my observation was this selected group of young male and female were professional, energetic, efficient, polite, respectful, and concern for all old people. It appears to me as if they were helping and serving their old parents. God bless them all. I well, thank, thank you so much, Arun, I for thank that you. comment. Uh, we have another caller, Anita. Did you want to go ahead and ask your question? Then UHN had a number of staff that did not receive the vaccination. How has the reaction been with Olsler Hospital staff, and do you have a, per, a percentage of staff that va got vaccinated? Yeah, I'll ask Kiki to answer that question. Thank you very much, Anita, for your question. Uh, first of all, uh, our, uh, I'd like to acknowledge our hospital staff, physician, and volunteers who are on the front line every day doing incredible work. Uh, I can't uh, thank everyone enough for what they are doing, and I know all of you as community members certainly appreciate it as well. We've been offering vaccination to segments of our staff, physicians, and volunteers um, for uh, a few months now, but we have not completed the entire list of every employee. Uh, we have staff that work remotely that are, have not yet been prioritized, but will be soon. Um, but we have been showing a lot of vaccine confidence uh, from our staff and physicians um, and volunteers. We don't have those numbers uh, to provide you as of yet because we haven't completed the whole list uh, as of yet. But we are encouraging all of our uh, employees to get vaccinated. As Lawrence discussed earlier, it's an important line of defense to keeping all of our staff, physicians, and volunteers safe and well. Thank you for your question. Wonderful. Thank you, Kiki. Our next caller is Eddie. Eddie, you had a question uh, about our hospitals. Please ask your question. Yes, I was wondering what capacity level the hospitals are running at and if, and if uh, a number, a separate number is given for like COVID patients and what that capacity level is. Great. I'll ask Kiki to, to give us another answer for that one, please. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Eddie, for your question. Uh, so uh, I out just outlined um, at the beginning that we currently have 76 COVID patients 
and that has been increasing over the last few days. In terms of our overall capacity, we, our inpatient beds are running at full capacity. We also have some surge capacity available uh, for our critical care patients. And uh, also, uh, I outlined that we've opened up uh, 87 additional beds with some one-time funding that the government has provided us. Our surgeries are not quite back up at pre-COVID levels. We are still working uh, through that. Uh, what I can tell you, and I'm confident in telling you this, we have the capacity to take care of you. And the reason we do uh, is from the many uh, initiatives we have in place, but also we're working with other hospitals. And if there's at any point um, our numbers are getting too high and we need to transfer patients to neighboring hospitals, we are working in a safe collaborative manner with them to ensure that that all of our patients are getting uh, the right care. Um, so I hope that answers uh, your question and be confident that uh, we want you to be coming to the hospital when you are sick. We have been seeing people that are waiting far too long to come to hospital. So I want to remind our community that if you're ill and need care, please do not hesitate to come to hospital. Wonderful. Thank you, Kiki. I know I can speak from personal experience. My dad had a situation and we had to bring him into emergency and, you know, it was quite a pleasant experience and all of right health and safety protocols were taken. So I do encourage our community to come to the hospital if they do have any needs. So we now have Mary. Mary, you have a question. Uh, Mary, please feel free to ask your question. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to thank you all so much for all you do for everyone and all you continue to do. Thank you so much to you all. Uh, so my question is, what precautions do we need to take even after receiving a full dose of vaccine? Wonderful, Mary. So I'll ask Dr. Lowe to, to answer that question for us. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you, Mary, for the question. Uh, this is a really important one. At this point in time, even with uh, more and more people being vaccinated, uh, we are still seeing significant rates of transmission in the community. And it's also not fully understood yet because the vaccines are so new. Uh, while they do offer uh, clear protection uh, to the individual uh, for whom uh, ha the vaccine has been administered, it's not clear if they may still be able to transmit the disease on or even uh, have the disease in a mild form. Uh, and a lot of this is going to be borne out over the next little while. Uh, so to the extent that uh, even after receiving the vaccine, uh, at least after the first dose and the second dose, the current guidance is uh, to stay with the precautions. Uh, that would mean uh, essentially continuing to distance, to mask, to try to really, uh, to, to try to really uh, limit uh, contact with people uh, outside of uh, your, your immediate household that you don't really live with, and to prefer the outdoors to the indoors, of course. Now, uh, obviously, as more and more people get vaccinated, as our uh, levels of protection in the community start to climb, then we will be able to see hopefully what has been seen in some other countries and jurisdictions where uh, they have reached a uh, broader vaccination of the population and perhaps start to see the loosening of some of these measures. But for the time being, uh, just given the rates of coverage we have right now, uh, it's, uh, it's really imperative that people who are vaccinated still stick to the measures uh, as we continue to study uh, the impact that the vaccine uh, has on uh, transmission in our community. Thank you, and I'll pass back to the moderator. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Uh, next up, we have Rita. Rita, you have a question for us about uh, percentage immunity. Uh, Rita, do you want to ask your question? No, I would just like to know the percentage of immunity that I have after receiving uh, the first Pfizer vaccine on March the 5th. Wonderful. I'll ask Dr. Lowe to answer that. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, the, uh, my understanding is that in the original documentation submitted to the US FDA, uh, which was uh, also submitted to uh, the Canadian government, it, the estimated efficacy was 52.4% uh, after one dose of Pfizer. However, uh, that was done, uh, apparently at the time it was connect, uh, collected, uh, the immunity would still have been mounting. And a further analysis since then has actually shown uh, that after one dose, the efficacy is somewhere in the range of, of 92.6%. So it, it, it is a significant amount of protection uh, that is mounted uh, by the uh, 
by the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, and, uh, and so certainly uh, after, the, after the two weeks of injection, uh, beyond when the initial immune response has been mounting, uh, you're seeing a, a significant level of protection with just one dose. Thanks for the question. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Lowe. Um, we have an online question from Sandra. Her question is, um, when will the 70 to 74 age group receive their vaccination? Dr. Lowe, can I have you answer that one as well, please? Absolutely. As I mentioned uh, with the initial uh, caller and question here, uh, we're continuing to manage uh, limited but increasing supply. And so certainly as we are able to both ensure that uh, those 75 plus who are at the greatest risk of severe and mortal outcomes are not left behind, uh, we will also be looking uh, probably within, within days or through the next week uh, to figure out how we can start to open a limited role uh, to 70 to 74 within the region of Peel. Um, and so certainly uh, it's, uh, it's something that we're keeping our eye on, uh, this careful balance as we aim to continue providing this protection broadly throughout our community. Thanks for the question. Great. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. We're now going to get the answers to uh, the second question that I asked, which was, are you planning to get the COVID-19 vaccine once it's available to you? And here's, what our, uh, here's what's been said. 56% said, yes, I'm planning to get the vaccine. 23% said, I need more information before deciding to get the vaccine. 4% said, no, I plan, uh, no, I don't plan to get the vaccine. And 17% said, I've already been vaccinated. So thank you so much for your helpful input. We would like to continue to answer more of your questions. So please press star three on your phone to bring you into the question queue and speak with Oscar's leaders. Again, we kindly ask that you keep your question brief so that we can get uh, to as many as possible. So our next question will be coming from Ava. Ava, did you want to ask your question? My question was um, about when would we be able to get the, the vaccine for um, people at 73, I hope. I am a PSW, and I tried in many ways. Um, my company did get to for me to go to Michael something hospital, but at the time I couldn't go because the Monday before, when we have that big windstorm, I lose my ID with my COVID badge, so I couldn't go. I got it back on the Thursday. I'm um, sorry to hear that, Ava. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Dr. Mohammed if he can can answer your question. Ava, thank you for the question. If you are a PSW and you have ID, then you can go onto our website and book an appointment at any one of our locations. Uh, we are offering the vaccines both at our Brampton site and at uh, our Tobacco General site. Uh, you may need an attestation form from uh, the employer uh, if you don't have ID. But if you have ID, you can also do self-attestation online. So my advice would be that you go on our website, you look under COVID-19 vaccine, and there will be a button that says Book Now. You can register there, book your appointment, bring your badge, and we can give you the vaccine. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, I believe we have another question from Servita. Servita, can you please ask your question? Yes. Hi, this question is for you, Dr. Dr. Lowe. Thank you for all that you have done. You're a very articulate uh, person on TV and uh, explain things very well. My question is, um, like a previous caller said, Brampton and Peel region is lagging behind in giving out vaccination. And I'm concerned because I would like to know when the province is distributing the vaccinations when they come in, how do they distribute it? Because there seems to be no transparency. Does Peel, York, how do they distribute it? We have 1.47 million people in Peel region, and uh, York has 1.1. And like the other caller said in, ha in Halton region, they are all expediting their vaccines. Is it because they have more vaccines than us? Because I find there is very uh, no transparency. Also, when the AstraZeneca vaccine was distributed, Peel region was left out completely from pharmacies. And it's a concern to all of us in Peel region why this is happening. 
Are we getting the short end of the stick here? I would like to know. Thank you. So uh, I'll... <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and answer. So thank you, Servita, for your kind words and uh, and certainly for the question. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, to the degree that the ministry and the province is aware of the situation in Peel and the need for vaccine, uh, they have indicated that regions are being given vaccines on the basis of uh, population as well as uh, need. And so certainly once uh, myself and also Dr. Mohammed on this call and also Michelle Emanuel at Trillium Health Partners, uh, three of us who are very involved uh, at provincial tables around the vaccine rollout, identified some of the uh, discrepancies that you've described, uh, we did have a conversation with the ministry to really ensure uh, that they were reminded. Uh, and as you know, we've now been confirmed in the next phase of the AstraZeneca pilot. Uh, we also know that uh, we continue to receive uh, more and more vaccine and that allocations and supplier and continue to increase. Again, I would not compare the success of regions that are opening up quickly uh, to ours. I think we have uh, really taken a focus on trying to also make sure that none of our seniors are left behind, as I've said. Uh, many other places are just basically getting down to groups so that they can just fill seats. Uh, whereas we're also trying to, while we are trying to make sure that the capacity is being used, we're also still trying to make sure that those who really do need this protection are given every opportunity uh, to access it. Um, but I mean, I think we're pretty much on par. I, I just read the other day that York uh, just passed 100,000 doses just a couple of days ago, and we were 100,000 doses on Monday and more since. So presumably uh, we're on pace, at least in, the, in that regard. And of course, we will uh, continue to watch the numbers uh, like a hawk, like our premier likes to say. And in the event that we're f feeling that we need uh, uh, more in the way of our um, in, in in the way of allocation, we will certainly uh, remind our ministry partners of the of the uh, uh, critical situation here in the region of Peel and uh, the Osler community. Thanks very much. Thanks, Dr. Lowe. Thank you for all the great questions that are coming in. Uh, we have another question from Olive. Olive, did you want to ask your question? Yes. Okay. Um, this question is for Dr. Lowe. Um, I have a mild heart attack on a mild stroke um, um, since um, earlier this month. And is it okay for me to get the vaccine now? I'm wondering if, uh, if Dr. Mohammed, you'd be able to actually answer this one. As long as uh, you are in the age groups that are available right now, Olive, it is perfectly safe for you to uh, get the vaccine right now. The only time there is some issue is that if you're undergoing some chemotherapy or immune therapy, and uh, it doesn't seem like uh, you're not, but if you want to be sure, you can call your family doctor uh, to get the advice. But from what the information you're giving me, it'll be perfect safe, perfectly safe for you to get the vaccine. Great. Thanks, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, we actually have another question from uh, Joanne. Joanne, did you want to go ahead with your question? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm calling uh, in from Etobicoke, and seniors 80 and older in uh, North Etobicoke watched as other regions and other hospitals in Toronto, and indeed, William Osler and Brampton started giving vaccines to the seniors, and Etobicoke was not included in that for almost two weeks. Um, I don't see a coordination between um, William Osler and Toronto Public Health. Um, if I go on to the public health website and they have a list of where vaccines can be had in the city, William Osler is not on that list. Every other region of the city is. So I want to know what William Osler is going to do to um, support the community in North Etobicoke and uh, help us get vaccines to the people that need it most. Great question. I'm going to ask Dr. Mohammed if he can if he can answer that one. Yes, thank you for, for your call. So, a, as you have stated, we have a vaccine clinic at uh, Etobicoke General. We've been running it for about two and a half weeks now. Uh, it is seeing people daily. Uh, we are working with Toronto Public Health. In fact, some of the vaccines that we're giving at, at Etobicoke General are being provided by Toronto Public Health. We recognize the gap. Uh, we had a discussion with Toronto Public Health and with Creo Public Health, and we collaborated to make sure that we were closing that gap, and we've closed it. 
If it's not on the website, uh, we will uh, make a call first thing tomorrow morning, and we will make sure that it gets on the website for uh, Toronto Public Health. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. So we have one more question. Uh, we're going to take this from Marjorie. Marjorie, you had a question um, for Dr. Mohammed, I believe. Can you please ask your question, Marjorie? Yes. Thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me? We can hear Hello? you. We can hear you, Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just wanted to find out. Um, why can't we get a, um, a good heart specialist in Brampton? Because I am 71 and I have to go to Toronto. My heart doctor sent me to Toronto General to see a heart specialist. And it, it's very costly and take a lot of time to go down there. And even to take my mammogram, the hospital up here used to call, send a letter, and up to they don't send any letter to us to come and do our mammogram or what. But um, I keep hearing we can come to the hospital. But nobody is sending us a letter or telling us. Because even to go to Toronto, it's very hard. And I hope when we get the new hospital, we can get a, a good specialist heart doctor up here instead of all the seniors have to go all the way to Toronto. That's a great question, Marjorie. I'm gonna hand that one over to Dr. Mohammed. Yes, thanks. Marjorie, uh, yes. I, I just want to let you know that William Moser Health System, Brampton Civic Hospital, does some of the highest number of cardiology uh, treatments, angiograms, angioplasties, and outpatient testing uh, in the province. Uh, we have a large number of excellent cardiologists, not only within our organization at William Moser Health System, we also have a very advanced cardiology program and the community in Brampton has a number of excellent cardiologists that do not perhaps work at William Moser but have their own cardiology labs. You may want to ask your family doctor or your internist why they are sending you all the way downtown because you can easily get excellent cardiac care uh, uh, at uh, at Osler and in uh, in in Brampton. The only thing we don't do is heart surgery. Uh, and there's another thing called electrophysiology of the heart, and we don't do all of it. We do some of it. For example, we do pacemakers. And and we have made a proposal to get the electrophysiology work here in Brampton as well. So I think this may only be a choice of your family doctor. I have a family practice in Brampton, and I send all of my patients to William Moser Health System, and the wait time is not that long. In terms of mammograms, once again, you may want to ask your family doctor on where you are in terms of the mammogram list. There's an Ontario breast screening program, and he may want to ensure that you're on the Ontario breast screening program. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks, Dr. Mohammed. I wish we had more time. Such great questions. So I just want to thank everyone for your insightful questions tonight. I hope you found the answers to your questions informative. Just a reminder that if we weren't able to get to your question tonight, the screeners are gathering your information so that we can get back to you. So I have one final polling question to ask you tonight, and I would appreciate your feedback as it'll help us plan our future Osler events. So the question is, um, has tonight's telephone town hall been informative and helpful for you and your family? Press one if your answer is yes, I feel more informed about hospital services in the community. Press two if your answer is somewhat, I learned a bit of new information. Press three if your answer is no, I didn't feel it was helpful. And press four if your answer is, I'm not really sure. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Mohammed for final thoughts. Thank you, Hema, for moderating tonight's telephone town hall. You have done a wonderful job, and we always appreciate the tremendous contribution you continue to make as a member of Osler's Patient and Family Advisory Council. To Osler's leaders, thank you, Kiki, Mary Jane, Anne, and Patricia, and a special thank you to Dr. Lowe for taking time out from your busy schedule to respond to questions from people in the many communities that Osler serves. Tonight, we have reached over 11,000 households throughout the hour. Thank you so much for your active participation and to everyone who called in with their questions and comments. Rest assured, 
Osler is your community hospital, and we will always be here to care for you and your loved ones with empathy and compassion. We hope that you will join the Ulster Foundation for this year's Holy Gala, the Festival of Colors, which will be broadcast online on Saturday, April 10th at 7 p.m. This year, the event is free and helps ensure that Ulster has the equipment we need to provide quality care close to home when our community needs it most. You can register for the event and find more information at holygala.ca, H-O-L-I-G-A-L-A dot C-A. On behalf of our staff, physicians, and volunteers, our deepest thanks for your ongoing support of Osler and our healthcare team. It means more than you will ever know. Stay safe, keep well, and remain vigilant with those public health measures. We will all get through this working together as we have been for the past year. I'm gonna hand it back to Hema for some last words. Wonderful, thank you, Dr. Muhammad. And I do wanna say a big thank you to everyone who works at William Oscar for all the great work that they've been doing over the last 12 months and before that. I think uh, anyone that's part of the community knows all the hard work and effort that definitely has gone into keeping us all safe and healthy. So this wraps up our, our Osler's Telephone Town Hall. I want to thank everyone for your great questions and active participation. If you have any questions we did not get to, please email them to publicrelations at williamosslerhs.ca, and we'll respond to them in the coming days. Once again, that's publicrelations, one word, at williamosslerhs.ca. Thank you again for joining Osler's Telephone Town Hall tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>